For those itching to empty their wallets to upgrade their gaming PCs, is it better to upgrade your CPU or GPU? Well, that seems simple enough, so let's test it and find out. I have this relatively budget system from CyberPower that I'll be tinkering around with to test this idea. Its stock configuration is what I'm calling the GPU upgrade option, as it's an RTX 3060, paired with what is essentially a three-year-old mid-range CPU, even though it is actually brand new, uh, the Ryzen 4500. For the old graphics card, I've picked a GTX 1660, which I know isn't the oldest or slowest, but I think it's a reasonable enough choice. And you know, if you uh, if you don't agree, feel free to let me know what you think and feel in the, the comments below, the algorithm will thank you. As for our CPU upgrade, that will be the fairly obvious choice, the Ryzen 5 5600X. It's not quite in the same price bracket as the GPU upgrade, as in you'll have to spend more money on the graphics card than on just the CPU alone, since, well, unfortunately the GPU prices haven't fallen quite in line with the CPU ones, but I think it's a, a reasonable choice and a sort of, the sort of upgrade that I could see a lot of people doing, so let's take a look. But first, a message from this video's sponsor, Lexar. Their Professional Series NM800 SSD is a PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe drive with blazing fast read and write speeds. You get up to 7.4 gigabytes per second in reads and 5.8 gigabytes per second in writes to help power through everything from gaming to content creation. It also features low density parity check to ensure your data stays secure and it even features an astonishing 3,000 terabyte written rating. That's three petabytes. Check it out at the link in the description below. Now, I'm testing at 1080p on what I call realistic settings, what you would actually play the games on rather than just a ultra settings everything. Meaning you generally get somewhere between medium and, and high settings in most titles, although that will be covered in the uh, information at the top of each graph. Let's run through the data and then we can talk about how those uh, the results might affect your system and your decisions. So starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, our bad plus bad config with the Ryzen 4500 and GCX 1660 nets us 90 FPS average in game, which definitely isn't bad. The much faster 5600X easily outperforms the 4500 in the CPU render average, but notice the average in-game FPS, which is just one FPS higher. Now compare that to the slower CPU, but faster GPU, which is running at 116 FPS average, or 26 FPS higher than stock. That is a significant increase for the faster card, and for good measure I'm also showing what upgrading both would look like, which in short is much better. 147 FPS average up from 116 with just the GPU upgrade, or 90 FPS with no upgrades at all. Moving on to Microsoft Flights, we get an interesting result. The CPU upgrade and base configuration average results are functionally identical but the 1% lows are markedly different. The 4500 nets under 40 FPS, whereas the 5600X nets more like 54 FPS, which would make for a fairly considerable difference in the, the playing experience for sure. If you upgrade the GPU instead, you'd net yourself 20 FPS more on average and more impressive 1% low figures than even the CPU upgrade, although if you were to upgrade both, you net a further 23 FPS average and 15 FPS more in the 1% lows. CSGO on the other hand is a pretty fun one because this is so heavily CPU bottlenecked that the GPU upgrade alone does exactly nothing. Like, literally nothing at all. You may as well not have bothered. 
Just upgrading the CPU, even with the slower 1660 graphics card, nets you exactly double the performance. And funnily enough, even upgrading the, the CPU as well, the GPU and CPU, only nets you around 80 FPS more, which I say only 80 FPS, that's great, but that's only 17% more performance from the, the CPU upgrade alone. So if you play CSGO, just buy a new CPU. Moving on to Cyberpunk, that is back to the status quo, with the CPU upgrade doing relatively little, whereas the GPU upgrade gets you most of the way to the, the double upgrade's performance, netting just shy of 100 FPS, up from a little over 60 on the base or CPU upgrade setups. The double upgrade does have markedly better 1% low performance though, alongside a further 10 FPS on average. Fortnite is a similar story, where the GPU upgrade offers a considerably improved experience over the base and CPU upgrade options. In fact, it offers better 1% low performance than the CPU upgrade setup can run on average. The gap to the, the double upgrade actually isn't all that massive, and the gap from the base to the 5600X and 1660 setup is pretty negligible, especially when you notice the 1% lows are actually higher on the 4500's run. Let's call that mm, trading blows. Finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion, which is one of the weirder or stranger results here. You can get more performance here, for sure, but you'll have to upgrade both your CPU and GPU to get it. The GPU upgrade on its own does provide 10 FPS more performance on average, and the CPU upgrade alone does offer a smoother playing experience overall, but neither are earth-shattering improvements. Only once you upgrade both of them do you get a more considerable improvement. So how can we translate this data to your system? Well, let's say that you've got an even slower CPU. That would essentially add more weight to the CPU upgrade option for you. The, the slower your CPU is, the more likely it is to be your main bottleneck. If you play lightweight games, like CSGO, you should almost definitely consider upgrading your CPU first, but on the flip side, if you have a worse graphics card, then in almost all circumstances, a GPU upgrade will be the single biggest improvement you can do to get more in-game performance. It's generally pretty rare for your CPU to be the biggest bottleneck in your system, at least for gaming anyway, so as a general rule, dedicating more funds to a graphics card, either upgrade or as you build it from fresh, is almost always going to net you better performance regardless of your CPU. Of course, there are plenty of caveats and, and sort of exclusions and uh, edge cases, uh, so if you'd like any specific advice, feel free to leave that in the comments down below, or make sure you're subscribed and uh, come check out our weekly live uh, sort of tech chats, tech support to streams. Uh, those are Thursday nights at 8pm UK time, so if you want to come and ask a question live to uh, me, then feel free to join those when you can. If you're interested in checking out this CyberPower system or some of the hardware that I've talked about, like the 5600X and RTX 3060s, I'll leave links to all of those in the description down below. The links to the hardware themselves will be uh, Amazon affiliate links uh, or global Amazon affiliate links that you can check out down there. Also, if you're interested in seeing more videos from me, there's plenty of videos that'll pop up on the end cards in a second, including the video on this cyber power system itself. Also, if you're interested in supporting my uh, my channel and, and these videos, then you can do so with either the YouTube join button, become a YouTube member and get some cool rewards for doing so, or join on Patreon instead. You can also check out uh, the affiliate links or places like Overclaws UK if you're buying from there, merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs. And there's a lot of other stuff you can check out in the description, so just feel free to take a look if you fancy. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll see you on the next video.